Yeah, we are back with what episode is this? Four? Cuatro, baby. Cuatro, cuatro. How you say um? Como se dice episode in español? Episodo. That's not how you <laughs> say episode, bro. <laughs> well, that's how I'm gonna say it. Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of this functional family. Thank y'all for rocking. <laughs> Y'all put in the comments. If anybody knows how to say episode in Spanish, yeah, let drop me know. that in the comments for us. Thank y'all for rocking with us. We back at it. Episode four. Um, today we're going to be scoffing. Whoa, yo, okay. you're jumping the Too gun. fast? A little bit. I'm excited. Those that are watching, oh, yeah, yeah. if you are new, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Please comment. Let us know your thoughts. Engage. Share. Hit that notification bell so that you know when we drop new content. That's how you become a YouTuber, a podcaster. Listen, I just wanted to deposit into the lives of if the you're people. Listening I'm, the I'm po- excited to share this information. You're still jumping the gun. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure y'all follow, make sure y'all download that episode. You know what I'm saying? Get that traction up for the algorithm. Right. All right. There we go. Now we can start. Can I? Yeah. You on, Watch you, my butt. You on your, All right. I did not uh, <laughs> touch her butt, yo. <laughs> tried to. He tried to. All right, y'all. Yeah, so today, episode four, we are scoffing about generational wealth. Super important, super necessary, and we're just excited to share the information that we have with you guys. Um, and like Deshaun said, feel free to like, comment, let us know what works for you, if anything that you know we're discussing today, if there are strategies and methods that you use, um, if anything that we don't discuss that you use, listen, we are open to expand the, nice. you know, what the things that we don't know that could possibly work for us. But enough scoffing about the, you know, the stuff that's not important. Let's scoff about the important stuff, right? Um, so we like to start off our episodes with a little anecdote, right? Let's get to this money. Let's go. Um, so we are huge fans of The Office. Yes. We know that, you know... It, the office has like polarizing uh, views. You know, people who either really love it or really hate it. We happen to be on the end that really loves. You know, this, this, the end of the spectrum that yeah. that really loves the office. One of our favorite episodes in particular um, is the episode called Scott's Tots. <laughs> I think it's from season one, if I'm not mistaken. Scott's nah, Tots. Definitely not. It's you not. No, Erin was... Um, Erin, right, right, right. So it was later. Right, right, right. My bad. It was probably like season It's been a while six. since we binged on it, though. Season seven, maybe. Scott Stotts is like Dang, a later right. episode. Yeah. You're right. That's a classic. Though. Well, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just... You know, we're going to be office yeah. fans. We can't just be like, right. saying my, anything. My bad, my bad. All right, all right. Go ahead. Um, so Scott Stotts, right? The, um, you know, y'all know Michael Scott. He makes... <laughs> he makes a promise to a group of third grade students that... <laughs> When they're finished with high school, chill. We ain't even get to the punchline yet. I know, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, go. So Michael Scott, uh, manager, regional manager of you know Dunder Mifflin, he makes a promise to a group of third grade students that uh, once they graduate high school, he's gonna pay for their college tuition. All the, the only, only stipulation is that you got to get through high school, right? Complete high school. Boom. I'll pay for your college tuition. Now we're talking about not like one student or two students, like a group of third grade students, right? Finish high school who pay for their tuition. Right. So um, 10 years passes from the time they're in third grade to the time they're getting ready to graduate high school. And he has to go, right? He has to go to the school um, and he has to face them and, you know, break the news to them pretty mm-hmm. much. Is he going right. to pay for their tuition? Is he in a place to do it or not? Right. right. He goes up to the school. He's met with everybody has on T-shirts that says Scott's Tots. They break out into song and dance. Hey, Mr. Scott, what you going to do? 
<laughs> Whatever, make our dreams come true, right? T-shirts and songs and dancing. They give them these emotional, heartfelt speeches. They're crying. Parents are there. Parents are there. It's Teacher, a like it's a happy. big deal, right? And then all these parents are expected for their their kids' college education to be paid for. Unfortunately, Michael Scott has to break the news to his tots that he's not where he thought he would be in life. He is in no position. To pay for anybody's college tuition. Not even one of the Not even one. Not even one, right? Um, y'all go watch the episode though. Like, even if you don't like the even if you don't like the series, just go watch that one episode. I promise you'll enjoy it. Anyway, we see all that to say. The moral of the story is it is important to start your financial journey early, right? Um, and even though Michael Scott made a promise to these students, and though they were not his, you know, his biological children, not even his godchildren, there's really no like connective piece there, except for the fact that he liked them. Um, so that even though they weren't their, his kids, the decision, the promise that he made, the broken promise that he made, it impacted the next generation, right? It it heavily impacted the next generation. Yeah, I mean, I think you got you got parents who probably were assuming their kids' tuition is going to be paid, so exactly. they're not saving for college mm-hmm. or anything like that. They're probably um, not applying for scholarships or saving on their own, right? Right, right. Um, and I think at the end of the day, though it's comical, it's 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 uh it's it's meant to be a funny show. Right. The the important piece here is that he makes a promise financially that he can't uphold because he just assumes mm-hmm. that he'll be rich. Right. He had a dream to be rich by the time these kids graduate, yeah. but he really didn't have a plan. Mm, right, right. So I think that's the important piece there is like, he just thought it would happen. A lot of us just think like, we're going to make our kids' lives better mm-hmm. By like happenstance, like, like osmosis, it's just gonna right, or or even our kids or our personal lives are gonna mm-hmm. get better by happenstance. Right. But in 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 actuality, it takes a plan. It mm-hmm. takes concerted and exerted effort to try to build wealth or try to establish yeah. um a, a a more secure financial future. Absolutely for your offspring or mm-hmm. even for your own life if yeah. you're someone that doesn't have children. Um, and and it, I think. The way to do that is, first of all, to start as early as you possibly can. Absolutely. So for parents out there, I would say one of the things that we do um, or that we learned about that has been beneficial for or what we hope to be beneficial in the future for our kids mm-hmm. is um, parents out there, as soon as your child is born, mm-hmm. start some type of like either custodial yeah. or 529 account. Mm-hmm. Now, just to be clear, there is a difference, right? Like uh, a custodial account is more like, um, what do they call it? Like UTMAs. A UTMA is like a Uniform Transfers to Minors Act. Mm-hmm. Um, a custodial account, kind of like you can transfer assets. It's a way to transfer wealth to your child if you don't have a trust, mm-hmm. right? Like, so if you don't have a set up, paid for, established trust, but you want to transfer money, yeah. wealth, assets, or something like that, you set up a custodial account. 529 is a little more restricted. It's really just about college. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you kind of get penalized if the kid uses it for something else. They yeah. take out more money or something right. like that. For us, the girls have a, 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 a custodial account. Mm-hmm. But I say that to say like, Start early, yo. Yeah. Like, like get get a jump start because you, you'd be surprised how fast the time goes. Mm-hmm. And like twenty dollars a week, yeah, thirty dollars a right. week. Right. Uh, I don't know what your situation is. Fifty dollars a month. Just think of a, an amount based on your current financial situation mm-hmm. that 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 like you can commit to. Yeah. That will help set up your kids better in the future. Right. Absolutely. It's better that. You're not just hoping your your dream. I mean, don't. It's not to say like, oh, your dreams won't come true, right? Or like, if you think that you'll be rich or wealthy, that it won't happen. Mm-hmm. It's not to say that, but like, while you're waiting, you gotta like be planning for yeah. something within the budget that you have. Um, and 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 for us, one of the things that we want to make sure, like, the reason we didn't, I, I'm gonna say this: the reason we didn't go with like a, a 529, right, mm-hmm. is because at the at the end of the day, our kids, I, 
I hate to say it, but like might not go to college, right? And I don't mean that because they're not intelligent enough. Right. I mean like they might start a business that booms while they're in high school mm-hmm. and they decide to to not do college. They might learn something, mm-hmm. um, you know, in you know through YouTube, and and it might lead to some other prosperity for yeah. them where they decide they can like offset, it yeah, or, or or you know go around college for their lives. So we didn't do a five twenty nine. We did a UTMA so that. Hey, if they decide they're going to do something else, they want to travel the world. I yeah. want them to have that option. Yeah. Feel me? I want them to have the choice to say, like, yo, I'm not going to go right to college. Yeah. But I need that money because this is the risk I want to take. Yeah. I want to do this business. I want to do this. Yeah. As long I, as it's like a well thought out plan. Not yeah, just, oh, exactly. I just wanna, Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? yeah, they're not going to go on a win with our bread. But at the same yeah. time, they we make monthly contributions mm-hmm. into this UTMA so that when they... When they graduate high school, mm-hmm. there's options for them, right? Right, like yeah. there's there's options for them to say, "I'm gonna go around the world, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to college, or I, I'm gonna start this company, and, and and this is the startup money I'm yeah. gonna need." Whatever it is, hey, I'm gonna start investing. I'm gonna become a day trader, and this is the startup money I need. But they have the option, and it's not just like this is all they're not like confined to a box and feel like they have to fit into like societal norms just because you know traditionally that's what you do you graduate you go to college you get a job and that's not to shame anyone who's done it like we're both college educated people yeah yeah, for sure but it's definitely just just to reiterate the the fact that you know you you want children to have flexible options and be able to choose and not feel like they're suffocating in this box that they kind of have to, this is the only route, for, the only path for me to take for, in order for me to be successful. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes you have to take risk and you have to do something that you're not totally sure about, but you know, you feel confident in it and it's good, just good to have um, some kind of support there not only from us but like financial mm-hmm. support also that they know that they have the resources available to pursue their dreams um another thing that we've done for our girls is we've added them as authorized users to our credit cards which um a lot of people um you know from what i know don't know that that is an option that's available to them mm-hmm. um so our children again as you know if this is your first time tuning into our, our podcast or not Um, Our children are four and six right now, and I have Zara, our four-year-old, as an authorized user on on one of my cards that is fully paid off. Um, If I need to use it, it's going to be super responsible. Like, I'm going to use it, pay it back right away. I'm not going to allow it to, um, like, accrue any interest or carry over a balance or anything like that. They show on... um, has Yanea as an authorized user on one of his cards, Thanks. and he's following, you know, the same model where, you know, it's a card that is paid off. Um, that so when they get to the age where they're able to use the credit card, that there are four important things that is that we are already setting up for them to be successful. You know, in, in regards to having like a good credit score. So adding your child as an authorized user at a young age does a couple things for them. By the time they're of age to use the card. One, it shows on their credit report that they have a, a low utilization. Again, you got to use the card responsibly. You keep it low, right. right. <laughs> so, up until from the time that you add them up until the time that they turn 18 um, or whatever, it, whatever age it is, use the card responsibly. Keep it, if you can, at like 10% utilization or less. Pay it back. Lower, I would say. Lower, 3%. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. If it's just like a quick grocery run, if it's something you're going to use your credit, your debit card for anyway, you're going to pay cash for it, buy your groceries, pay it right back. Um, so, yeah, keep it, it gives them a low utilization record. Um, it gives them, it shows also that they have high credit limits because as, keep, as you keep using the card responsibly, that uh, that financial institution is going to increase your credit limit over the course of time. Right, right. Not, not only that, it shows that they have an extensive history, right? They have, they already at 18 will have over a decade's worth of um, some kind of record Facts. of using money and paying it back and just a responsible um, history of, of using the card. And lastly, it shows a perfect payment history. Um, so, you, like I said, you're using the card, you're paying it back right away, you're not carrying over balances or defaulting on any payments. Um, so you want to set your children up to be successful and to have um, as high a credit score as possible 
you got to make sure that you're responsible in how you use that card. If you know, like, just don't touch it or touch it and yeah, put it was, right away. Yeah, I wouldn't say, like, in, in my opinion or my experience, I wouldn't say, like, completely neglect it. No, right? absolutely. Like you, right, have right, to, right. you have to use it so that, like, it remains active. Mm-hmm. It, it looks better to the, to the institution that yeah. you have the account with to say, Hey, I'm using it, and mm-hmm. then I'm paying it off. Mm-hmm. Keep, you know, keep it at one to three mm-hmm. percent. Really, really low utilization, but I'm still using it. I'm yeah. still active, right? So now your child's credit is also coupled with that. And what that does is, like, at at 18, once again, generational wealth is about setting up. Like, it's not just about giving them money, right? It's yeah. about like setting up options Mm -hmm. and i think that's like a a, a, another layer to generational wealth that's like not fully understood it's like this idea of like you know how many of us wish you know what i'm saying we could go back i'm sure there's like tons of listeners that are that are listening or that will be listening that like yo i wish you know i could go back and had a little extra pocket change to start a business or something like that i didn't really want to take this major in college or I, I wanted to do this in college, but I also wanted to do this on the yeah. side. And, like, you don't have that flexibility. Yeah. And we it's, end up taking a safe route. Right. And, and everything in life that's successful doesn't start with, like, just safety. Yeah. Right? It sometimes yeah. it starts with risk, but mm-hmm. you need that flexibility to take that risk. You know what I mean? Um, I, I actually want to um, I want to give a couple, for, for, for those that are listening, I'm going to give you all a quick rundown of different credit companies and what ages they start so that if you are a parent out there, mm-hmm. you can, if you have, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't let this be a card you use up a lot, yeah. right? This has to be a card that you barely touch that you can use for like minimal things. Mm-hmm. But if you are out there and you want to consider adding your child to um, your credit card, I want to give you which companies um, and what ages you can start with which company. So like American Express, the mm-hmm. minimum age is 13. So if you have an Amex card, um, it does report to credit bureaus, mm-hmm. but not until your child turns 13. So don't waste your time <laughs> adding your your yeah. child to it if your child's only five or if your child is 10 or if your child is, you know, still months old. Um, if you have an Amex, if you have like Bank of America, there's no minimum age. And yes, it does report to the credit bureau. So if you have a Bank of America credit card that you know you keep at your low utilization, um, you have a nice high credit limit mm-hmm. or you're building the credit mm-hmm. limit, that's a safe card to use. Um, some people have Barclays cards. If you mm-hmm. have a Barclays card, they don't start till 13. Um, Capital One, Capital One, there's no age limit. So you can start when their babies chase no age limit. You can start when they're babies. Citibank, no limit. You can start when they're babies. Um, and Discover, they don't start till they're 15. All right. So for the most part, through Capital One, Chase, Citibank, or Bank of America, if you have a credit card with any of those companies, you can literally use that company, um, get a low credit card. I mean, get a credit card, get one that you keep low, add your child as an authorized user. Don't don't give your child the call. No, don't give them. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at four and six, they can't go anywhere to use it right, right. now anyway. But once let's they be, get to like clear. teenage years, like yeah, 12 like, and 13, where they, you know, hanging out with friends and stuff, facts, they, facts. you still not touching it. So, facts, facts, <laughs> so you able to pay back what you spend. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's, or, it's cute though. Cause I, I love it. Cause the girls are so hyped. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I got. She she talk, she go tell her grandmother. Like, I got a credit card, grandma. I can't touch it until I'm eighteen. <laughs> but when I do turn eighteen, I'll be able to buy a car or a house if I want to. Yeah. And as much as she doesn't fully know what she's talking about, yeah. there's some truth to that, mm-hmm. right? Like at the end of the day, she, her credit will be good enough, absolutely, that she will be able to buy a car or a house absolutely. or whatever she wants. So it's like. Essentially, she's actually accurate. Right. She's actually right about what she possibly could do with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to add that. But but that actually has me thinking though, mm-hmm. because we also are invested into like cryptocurrencies, right? So yeah. like, um, we got some XRP, mm-hmm. we got some Bitcoin, we got some Ethereum, mm-hmm. um, Ethereum rather. Um, got a little bit of not everything, but you know, we got some stuff. So for those that are into crypto. I know this is this is like foreign language for some people. Yeah. For some people, I mean, for others, it's like I know it, but I don't fully, you know, understand it. I I can't stress this enough. Mm-hmm. It is really important 
to at least start doing the research of yeah. what cryptocurrency is, mm-hmm. why is it important, and like how is that going to help with generational wealth or establishing right. uh, uh, some more like financial security for your family and for your children. Mm-hmm. Cryptocurrency is really like a, a, a decentralized form of currency, right? It's, it's a system of currency that does not depend on any like already established traditional currency, like the American mm-hmm. dollar. So the re- here's why I say it's so important. I, I I really need us to understand like the direction that the world is moving, yeah. right? This like this digital space that we're heading into, mm-hmm. where. People's finances are not solely caught up in just the American dollar, mm-hmm. like which is stand- losing value is rapidly. Losing value, right? <laughs> so standard paper forms of yeah. currency are, are like it's losing its value. So, like in order for your children to be competitive in the future, yeah, you got to set them up in now, the digital space, right. right? Like some of your assets should be i'm not saying go all in right uh-huh. you need some money in your, in your checking account yeah you need some some credit you, you need you know you need to have a nice balance but some of that money gotta be in cryptocurrency i agree i know for some people it's like it's volatile yeah. it's like it's not trustworthy that's li- like the world is becoming decentralized yeah. economically mm-hmm. it's becoming decent- people don't even like carry cash anymore like forget like the american dollar using value it's very rare to have People with like hard cash in their That's wallet, like so people, they're swiping even... a debit card or a credit card. People, <laughs> I ain't got a dollar, bro. Not a I mean, we dollar home, in my pocket. So. <laughs> it don't matter. I still got pants on, yeah. and these are the same joints. So, so you know, but yeah, like getting back to that, like these digital assets, these yeah. digital spaces from cryptocurrencies mm-hmm. to even more newer like findings, like VR, like virtual reality, mm-hmm. or AR, like artificial reality. Uh, 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 NFTs, mm-hmm. non fungible tokens, right? This digital art yeah. space, this digital real estate space, this mm-hmm. digital asset space. It it's important to have because a lot of the direction, like of the world, is actually moving in a space that's away from the falling value of yeah. the dollar. Yeah, and like soon, sooner or later, Bitcoin is it, you're gonna be able to buy. Almost everything yeah. with Bitcoin if you chose to. Right. right? Like you're going to walk into Starbucks and they just going to be like, oh, you, <laughs> you want to do Bitcoin or you want to do credit or you want to do debit. And you're like, oh, I can do Bitcoin, right? Like yeah. you're going to want to, you know, I, or use some Satoshis or whatever, which is like <laughs> pieces of Bitcoins, but that's a whole nother like discussion, right? Like th- there are so many different digital spaces that money is moving into. Yeah, man. But, but what's happening is like the world is heading in a direction that actually it, it so it doesn't support education in the traditional sense which is why this is important for your kids to know mm. it doesn't support education in a classroom mm-hmm. the new university is sitting online on youtube the new university is you know learning from something on tiktok the new university is a to do list yeah. on a on a reel on it's like people are absorbing tons of content and information from influencers yeah. and from people developing their own PDF mm-hmm. booklet. And not and, even to mention like this is stuff that we didn't learn in school. Right. You know what I mean? Like we didn't get any uh economics courses or elective classes or tax classes or anything in in high school. So just to reiterate the fact that it's important that we do our research now and try to figure out Ways that we can set ourselves up for the future and mm. ways that we can set our children up to be, you know, financially stable, financially secure, That's financially right. responsible um, when they become of age. Yeah. I mean, the reality is the jobs that kids are being trained for in college are not really the jobs that will be available because most of these companies yeah. are finding cheaper ways to to, to do it on computers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so, so it's leading to a, a jobs being snuffed out and the traditional understanding of college being snuffed out, right? Mm-hmm. And, and unless these universities start to shift how they inculcate and incorporate di- the digital space mm-hmm. into more enterprising classes, more entrepreneurial classes, more tech classes, more real estate classes, if they don't start doing that, yeah. 
they're going to see a drop in just people that even want to go to college. Yeah, especially now um, since the pandemic, like people being able to work from home. I got my entire degree from home. (laughs) Like my master's program was one year, but I did the whole thing from my (laughs) from my living room, from my bedroom, from my house. Right. Um, So, yeah, we just have to, you know, be a step ahead and look at the direction that um, work, life, school, the world is going and just prepare for that so that we're not caught off guard. You know right, what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, speaking of that though, speaking of that, mm-hmm. that's another thing. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to shame nobody. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't want anyone to feel bad because some of this is just ignorance and not ignorance in a bad way, but just not knowing right. and not being taught. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. I hate, oh, I hate when Especially people of color, because that's where I see it most, not going to lie. I hate when one of our loved ones or our peoples die. Mm-hmm. And Ooh, you going to say we, it? I got, what do you want me to say? I got to say it. It's a podcast. You, you know what I'm saying? Say you got to say it. I hate when we have to do the... I know what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say? I, I hate Ooh. the GoFundMes for funerals. And me it's... Too. It's hurtful, not yeah. not in the sense of like, yo, you something's help, wrong with right. the person needing right. help. That's not that's not the issue. I think the reason my heart breaks about it is because it's mostly people of color, and what we see is like it. Most of the time, it has to happen because people don't have the proper means mm-hmm. to, to handle the funeral expenses, whether and it's a savings account or life insurance policy to pay that, for. And that, that's the key, though, right there, like. Life insurance can be used. A lot of times we think about just death, mm-hmm. but life insurance can be used for life as well, right? That's a fact. So like, and a lot of people don't know that. It's like you waiting for, not waiting for someone to die, but you expect that after a loved one dies that what you're going to get, you know, from their life insurance policy will pay for the funeral and um, help you move on with, you know, whatever you need in life. But there's so much that you can do with the life insurance policy yeah i mean some of them they have like depending on who you you know sign up with you mm-hmm. can do like life insurance plans that have that compound interest mm-hmm. um so for those that don't know you know what i mean you could put hundred something dollars to the side you in good health you at a good age two hundred dollars to the side that mm-hmm. you can you know afford monthly um you can get a decent plan even yeah. if you know just a hundred dollars or something like that you can get a decent plan that might be, you know, in six figures, mm-hmm. but not just in six figures for like when you die, but mm-hmm. like they also have ones that like compound interest over time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, of course, you can get term life insurance as well, but if you get whole life ones, they can compound interest over time. And after 10 years, 15 years, you might have saved up enough to give your child a wedding gift mm. to help them down, you know, get a down payment for a house. You might have saved up enough to, if you don't have a home at that time, that you can buy a home or that you could put into an investment property mm-hmm. or something like that. Like you can actually take money from the compounded interest yeah. against the loan. Yeah. And you can literally leverage your life insurance for life's expenses yeah. while there's still what six figures sitting in yeah. Uh, the 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 policy for if you die yeah, and not be right. penalized for taking out right the and there's no penalty right I mean of course there are plans where you have to take a loan against it mm-hmm. but if you don't plan to pay it back guess what's gonna happen if you let's say you take out twenty thousand dollars you plan on buying a house yeah. you take out twenty thousand dollars and you had a two hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy hey you got your house and if you don't plan on paying that loan back you're not gonna get penalized yeah, now you got one eighty <laughs> yeah now whoever is your recipient your beneficiary they get one eighty yeah it just gets taken out the total amount right. which is not a bad thing you yeah. know what I mean it's like hey but my I guess my point being like it I just hate to see it like yeah. when our people have to depend on a GoFundMe because yeah. there was like nothing left yeah. so like. We got like we got to do more. We got to exert more yeah. into like energy into like thinking about not just our kids now. Yeah. Like oh, I threw them the best party they could have. Yeah. But like, how can I take that party, some money, and like throw a nice party mm-hmm. but a less expensive party mm-hmm. and then take some of the other money yeah. and put it to in this account for them or something like that? Like we don't think far enough down the line, and I think I don't mean to be super like somber in this episode but i just want to be real because um it's something that i had to wake up to 
and readjust how I was spending my yeah. money yeah. to establish like, yo, time is flying. I ain't got time to be right. waiting until this happens yeah. in my life to know that I'm going to be secure. Yeah. I ain't waiting on no lottery. I ain't waiting on no mm-hmm. record deal. I can do it with what I have right. coming in now. Be responsible with what and you have and then it'll early. grow exactly. and then you're able to do even more. Exactly. Um, and like you said, it's not to shame anybody because this is not information that we always had. Right. We had to That's do our fact. research. We That's had to... Uh, you know, get the information from the resources that were available to us. And we just had to readjust our spending, readjust our budget in order to use what we have and more responsibly. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You want to so, you want to talk a little bit? I want before we close out, I definitely want you to talk a little bit about I, or I can talk about it. I don't really matter. Whoever want to talk about it. But um, what are some of the things that like like that we do? Outside of what we already named, but like, how do we take this information, but like teach it to the girls in a way they can understand? Mm, Okay. Um, So for instance, seven days of the week, Yanea and Zara know when they wake up in the morning, brush their teeth, have breakfast, blah, blah, blah. Before they get any screen time, Mm -hmm. either on their tablets or the television, they know that they have to read a book and count to a certain number. Mm. So yeah. they come to me, mommy, can I watch Disney Plus or can I watch my tablet? Did you read? Right, you know what right, I mean? Right, so they know right. they have to earn that. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And it's important to teach them um, earning power mm-hmm. even at a young age. So again, they're only four and six, but they know that nothing is just given to them. What mm-hmm. are you, what responsible like thing that. are you doing in order to earn a certain quote-unquote luxury mm. so for us um if we want to go to hawaii we know that we need to <laughs> drop in hints if we want to <laughs> if we yeah, if we want to go on vacation with the subtlety I if we want to go on vacation, i hear you say less i hear you can't just say hawaii for episode five i'm doing it <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Nah, if we want to go on vacation though like we know that Okay, we need to save X amount of dollars a week or Mm. we need to sacrifice this in order to earn a vacation or earn a splurge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, So they know that. And not only earning screen time, they know even simple things like food. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I I wasn't. But like, yeah, we we, (laughs) we, um, (laughs) like when we take them to the grocery store Mm -hmm. with us. Right. And when we're buying things. There are days where they ask for stuff and they get it, mm-hmm. right? And there's other days where it's like they ask for things that are like treats, mm-hmm. right? Delicacies um, that are not necessary. Mm-hmm. And it don't mean mom and dad ain't got the money. We can buy them extra treats. But mm-hmm. sometimes we say no just to teach them, hey, these things are more important to have in the yeah. house than this stuff. This stuff is going to be better for you and Mom and daddy don't have it yeah. to, to, to get both, right? Yeah. And even it, it could, it's a, there are days where we kind of go in, mm-hmm. Ben and I talk about it. We were like, all right, today we ain't been no extra stuff, right? Just because we want to teach them the value, right? The economy of resources. Mm-hmm. So they understand that like, yes, I'm going to provide for you and yeah. I'm going to give you what you need, but everything is not unlimited. Yeah. And when you learn to respect the stuff that's important to you now as a kid, Okay, ices and cookies are not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. Cake is not going to last forever, right? When you start learning what's important to you as a kid, guess what's going to happen? You get to that next stage in mm-hmm. life and whatever is important. If you want to go out with your friends, go yeah. to the movie, that's what's important to you at that season of yeah. life. You're going to earn that, yeah. right? Okay, did you do your chores, right? So now when you become an adult, the things that are important to you, I'm taking yeah. care of my bills, taking care of yeah. my business. You still understand the economy yeah. of resource. You have to and do I, you something don't to build like, up. Right. You don't become like frugal, still live like yeah. a queen, still live like you're supposed to live, but know that you want to establish some, yeah. right, like a queen, but know that you want to establish some security yeah. um, for yourself, um, some emergency funds, some investment for your future. Yeah. And just learning that, like, I think my goal overall is like with the whole tablet time thing is that. It's almost like a bank of time that mm-hmm. they're earning. Yeah, yeah. Right? The, the bank of time that they're earning with screen time, mm-hmm. with tablet time, with TV time, with movie time, whatever, with play time. Mm-hmm. They're understanding that, like, they, I think there's, like, a message we can learn that they're going to be better with financial management because they're learning to be resourceful mm-hmm. with other stuff now, yeah, even right. though they're 
it's not finances. So it's, it's just, just something yeah. that's valuable to them. Right. So it develops as, you know. It develops that, a mindset about right. so, resources. Right. So wanting a tablet at four and six um, is important to them right now. And yeah. wanting to hang out with friends but needing to do, to do choice, chores first is going to be important at 12 or 13. And then uh, in college, wanting to go yeah, away for spring or break or get yeah. a spring break. You know, did you get A's or, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Did you save a little money from what mommy and daddy were giving you while you were yeah. away? Just whatever it is, you plant the seeds that Hold up, it, hold up. They paying for their own spring break. <laughs> That's why I got this custodial account now. <laughs> this the point UTMA is, now. The point they is. They pay for their own now going on spring break. Let's we'll be see. Right. Nah, let me stop. You plant the seeds <laughs> early so that um, at least they they understand the concept of it. Um, for sure. Like you said. For sure. Um, I like that. Right. I like that. So I'm gonna give. I guess we'll, let's let's give with some um, some some like closing points on like how to function. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think to wrap up, here's what I would say, and I mean this from my heart. Mm-hmm. It's probably the most serious I've been in all of the episodes thus far because this is a really really like. Uh, important topic to me. Mm-hmm. If I had to leave you with anything, I would say that generational wealth requires generational sacrifice. Mm, I like that. Yeah. It does not start by happenstance. Yeah. Like the chances of like just this random lottery mm-hmm. dump. <laughs> and I'm saying lottery metaphorically, not necessarily hitting the jackpot. Right. The literal lottery, but like sometimes we just think we're gonna stumble across some yeah. like jackpot yeah. of a of a city. No, I mean every once in a while, everybody gonna come across a lick. You know what I mean? Everybody gonna come across, you know, a situation that we get 10k or yeah. 5k. I don't know if it's taxes it's or something. Stimmy. But a little stim <laughs> right, but you're not everybody gonna come across a lick. Of but something. You, you're not gonna come across like established wealth. Yeah. And the and discipline that it takes yeah. to set up, like you so, said. Somebody's got to start sacrificing. Yeah. And even so, like <laughs> with our children, our, our hope and our prayer um, is that with our diligence and what we're doing now, that they'll take what we leave to them and they'll be responsible with it and leave it even more right. for their children. You right. know what I mean? So it's not, hey, mommy and daddy are, are dead. <sighs> You know, or not to be so blunt, but mommy and daddy are gone. They right. left me with this. Um, let me just use it all up because I have an abundance. Just no, let me take, you know, all that they gave me and create even more and mm. expand even more. So we're not just setting up the next generation just to live comfortably and cozy and, you know, they don't have to think about it. Right, um, but right. it's teaching them, you know, setting them up to be responsible with the more that we give yeah, them also. Build from what we established. Because listen, we ain't... I'm, I'm wealthy in spirit, but I ain't wealthy where I want to be financially. Yeah, we got room I, to grow. I just know that there are things that our forefathers and foremothers didn't know, and there's stuff that we currently don't know that our children will know. Yeah. And there are things that our grandchildren will know that our children don't know. Yeah. Right? So I, it's going to grow. But that's the hope. The hope is that it continues to get better, that's continues it. to get bigger. That's it. Um, and continues to give our children, especially people of color, mm-hmm. opportunity. Absolutely. Right? Um, you ready to get into this? What are we doing? This or that? This or that? Is uh, that what we're I, selling I, on? I guess. Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's roll with it. Yeah, let's, Unless let's, we think of something else. I know what time it, it is. Uh, uh, all right. This or that. This or that. D I S S D Y S. Let's get it. Whatever. This or that. All right. What's the first question? All right. <laughs> Do you, would you rather never get the chance to pick what we watch? Mm-hmm. Like, that means the movies, Netflix, Hulu, binge watch shows, you never get to pick mm-hmm. or never pick what we eat. So which one would I rather not do? Yeah, what okay. do you prefer? All yeah. Right. I'd rather never pick. Right. What would you never pick? I think I asked that right. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I have an answer. I don't know if I feel committed to this. Alright. I'm ready, man. You take it on. Remember, if y'all are watching. On YouTube. Oh, by the way, can I plug this real quick? This is 
all velvet right here, baby. What is this, velvet? Yes. <laughs> you better believe it. Generational Wealth Caps available at freethesoulsclothing.com. You know the vibes. Black Family Matters Tea, freethesoulsclothing.com. Shirt brought to you by Love Hate Unite. Dot com. Show love, man. It's black business. It's just dripping in black business. The ring by the boy Johnny Nelson Jewelry. All right. Can we, can we just... Oh, sorry. All right. Would we rather <laughs> never pick what we eat again or never pick what we watch again? Here we go. Ready? We're going to say our answers for people that's listening on podcasts. All right. Never, never pick what we watch. Never pick what we eat. Oh. I... I- you want to explain? Sure. All right. Let's make it quick. I'd rather never pick what we watch just because um, I think you you usually have better suggestions for what to watch. And Why, thank you. I mean, I'll be having some fire stuff, too. Young Siskel but, and Ebert in the building. Oh, no. That's probably like an old reference. Yeah, I don't know what Siskel and Ebert is. Never mind. Forget it. I think you have like a lot of... Um, you got a lot of good recommendations of stuff to watch. And I think with you picking what we eat all the time... It just forces me to be more disciplined because I'm more likely to cheat with like, you know, when I'm not supposed to be eating cookies and then I eat a cookie. You just picked both. No, I didn't. I said, I'd rather you pick. Oh, I did. Yes. Oh, shoot. If See, I, I told you I wasn't we, committed. I don't know. I pick what we eat. All right, hold on, hold on. never pick what we eat. And you Dang, I said the same thing buy. twice. I'm wilding. Yeah, you wilding. All right. Which one is it? No. it? Y'all, we are recording super late right now and I'm foggy headed. All right. Well, never, never pick. pick what what we watch. I gotta stick with what I wrote. Right, thank I you. guess this is yeah, my instinct. Stick. That's the rules, man. Mine's is never. I pick, pick what, what we eat. You pick what we watch. Yeah, that's my answer. I got to pick what we eat. So I guess it works. It works together, even mm-hmm. though it's different answers. Oh. I just trust that, like one, like we both have like similar diets in terms of like tastes. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not tripping about what we, but what we watch. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't start. Next question. Don't I'm start. I'm not watching another criminal <laughs> serial killer documentary. Y'all, if I could, we would watch Ted Bundy Ooh. all day. We would watch Snapped. We would watch. <laughs> I'm like, yo, is this something I need to know? What the heck? What is going on? Love not them. Just... I'm not. Nah, I'm picking all the shows. I wouldn't watch it all the time. Like she I would balance it out. We got good diets. <laughs> we'll go back know. and watch The Office again. Yeah, next question. Next man. question. So, would you rather... Oh, this is <laughs> Why I always got to say the nasty questions? <laughs> go ahead, man. Go, quick. Would you rather yeah. share a toothbrush or share underwear? <laughs> Yo, you realize I'm a battle rapper? This is about to be an angle for the rest of my All right, just choose your career. answer. Share a toothbrush or underwear? You very hard on me. <laughs> Yeah, I hear my marker. <laughs> Good job, All right, three. Why are you writing so small? I don't know. Who we What'd you put? Underwear. Underwear. <laughs> you was a nasty. <laughs> I said, <laughs> oh, nah, you gross, bro. You gross. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Let me get my answer up. <laughs> you gross. I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> Go quick. I'd rather share a toothbrush just because I feel like you have really good oral hygiene. <sighs> and then, like, I don't know the stipulation behind the whole underwear thing. Like, if we got to wash it, like, if we're allowed yeah, still to wash be clean. it. It's not like we wear, I, think about it, it's not like you wear your own dirty drawers. Yeah, but. The drawers will still be clean. It's just, it'd be your, it'll be my drawers and no, I'd be wearing so. your drawers. I'll just rinse the toothbrush <laughs> over for, because I know after you brush your teeth, you're going to rinse it. After you're done, I'll rinse it before I use it. Nah, Pour a little mouthwash on it Listen, before and after. I, That's gr- I don't even want to hear explanation. I'll tongue, I'll tongue you down, but use- tooth, toothbrushes. <laughs> nah, I need I need my own. I'll wear your drawers. <laughs> a little 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 bit. <laughs> yes. Before I share a tooth, nah, bro. Last question. Toothbrush, cool. <laughs> nah, that's just yuck, nasty. I don't mm-hmm. really like trust you because your morning breath kind of be. Could great. you chill? Oh, What's the last question, bro? <laughs> oh, for, bro. <laughs> all right. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Would you rather lose all the money that you've made in 2021? So from January to now. From January to now, or would you rather lose all the memories that you made? In 2021. Let's. Oh, man. You go again, Loud Marco. <laughs> Miss Loud Marco over here, y'all. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Rather lose. I'd rather lose memories. Memories. Me too. Yeah, we'll make new ones. Yeah. And with, with the bag. 
All right, yeah. y'all. Listen, <laughs> we'll make new ones. Ain't nothing crazy, Speaking monumental. Now, I'm not even explaining that answer. <laughs> Ain't nothing crazy, monumental happen this year. Not yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll be all right. <laughs> Yo, we love y'all. Thank y'all for rocking out with us for another episode. For sure, we hope for that sure. something that we said you find beneficial, find useful, find practical, something that you can take and apply to your own lives. Um, and be intentional. And it's not that you got to start, you know, if you have nothing that you're really saving, uh, you know, no savings or investments, um, even if it's $5 a week, I promise you, I wish that when I was 18, 19 working part time that I saved at least $5 a week or, you know, a little bit more. Um, so start small, um, be realistic, but start somewhere mm. is, is the, start is the, is I the like thing. That. Just start somewhere, y'all. Um and don't be ashamed if you don't have $100 a week or $100 a month. Start with what you have, and I promise you it'll grow, and you'll you'll be proud about it over in no time. Um, I so, concur. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap for episode cuarto. Right? Episodo. That's not it. We out, man. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs>